Hey everyone, today we're going back to 1953 and we are gonna do another Pillsbury Bake Off winner. This is an amazing one. You're gonna love it. Let's get started. Hey everyone, I'm Jill and this is Yester Kitchen. Part food history, part cooking. I'm so happy you're here. So today we are gonna talk all about the Pillsbury Bake Off, which is amazing. Now the Pillsbury Bake Off started in 1949 and it was started as a way to have people use Pillsbury flour. But I already went over all the history and I made a fabulous recipe. If you're interested in the Pillsbury Bake Off and the history, check out that video. And if you really love the Pillsbury Bake Off and the history, check out that one too. I have you covered. Today we're gonna to make an amazing, amazing cookie called the peanut brittle cookie, which is so easy because it's, you don't have to roll it. And there's no dough to like form or cut or cookie cutters or anything. It's just in the pan and go. Today's recipe is brought to us by Mrs. John Hamlin. There she is. And yes, in the 50s, women were Mrs. Their husband's name, it's just the culture, how things were. She was from Fergus Falls, Minnesota, and this was the fourth annual Pillsbury Bake Off. Now, of course, it's still going on today, so we know how amazing and how long it's been going on. So Mrs. Hamlin has, was entered in the senior division, and she won best of class, and she won $1,000 for it. Now, I know it's like, ooh, $1,000. $1,000 in 1953 was worth $9,633 today. Pretty awesome. So let's make this almost $10,000 cookie. So the first thing I did was I set my oven to 325. We are going a little lower temperature for this one. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sift some flour with a few little ingredients. And I've never really showed you how I measure flour before, so I thought this would be a great opportunity. I use something called the dipping method, which is pretty much the easiest thing you can do. So we're gonna need one cup of flour, and I've got all my flour here. And really, all you do is dip your flour, I use a knife to kind of get it in there. I spill a little bit while I'm at it. This is just a little over full. But put my flour in the measuring cup. Now you never want to pack flour because you, you want to keep it light. So what I do to even it out is I take the back of my knife, sorry, back of my knife, and I kind of just kind of tap it just lightly across and let all the excess flour fall off. And then I take the back of my knife and swipe it away. And there I have one perfectly measured cup of flour. Get that out of the way. And to that, we're gonna add a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. They make sifters and you can get sifters, but I just use a strainer. It works perfectly well. And you just kind of shake, 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 until you get everything through and by then all the everything's mixed together and if you have these little rocks left in there just get rid of them you don't need them okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the flour out of the way and we're going to bring in a larger bowl and this is where we're going to do all of our mixing so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take one stick of softened butter and it goes and you're going to cream that with a half a cup of packed brown sugar because brown sugar you do want to pack so i'm going to go ahead and have my trusty mixer, and we're just gonna beat this until it's all mixed together and light and fluffy. Okay, so there we go. We've got it just really happily all creamed together, and I'm gonna take my trusty spatula and push down the sides. Now, the next direction is a little strange, but we're gonna do it. I've done it. It works. It's just how the recipe is. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. That's not the strange part. And now, here we go. I have one beaten egg. Now, we don't need the whole beaten egg. We're going to need the whole beaten egg, but in two parts. So the first thing is we're going to put two tablespoons, which is not the easiest thing to do, of this beaten egg. You want to move really fast right in there. There you go, two tablespoons. That's it, that's all we need. The rest we're gonna save for later, so don't throw it out. And then we're gonna mix again. Okay, now it's time to get our flour in. So when you mix in flour, you wanna mix a little bit at a time. You don't wanna just dump it in, and you wanna keep your beater on low so it's almost like a stirring effect instead of a beating effect. So we're just, we're just gonna do this now. Just 
check it out. It's pretty low. Here we go. Okay, there we go. There's our mixture. Not a lot, but it's perfect. Okay, and the last thing, I know you're going, where's the peanuts? Here come the peanuts. So we're gonna need one cup of peanuts, but they're gonna be divided. So you're gonna have one cup divided in half. You're gonna have half a cup of just regular peanuts like they come out of the jar, and the other half of half cup you're gonna finely chop. You can chop them any way you want. I just put them on a cutting board, take my big knife, and chop, 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 chop. Golden. So for now, all we need are our chopped peanuts. So we're gonna take those, again, a half a cup, and add them, and just kind of mix them because you really want to incorporate them. The other half a cup is gonna be sprinkled on top right before baking. Okay, now I have a greased cookie sheet. Not a tiny one, but you can use a medium one or a large one, whatever you have. And I have impeccably clean and wet hands because this dough gets a little sticky. And you're gonna wanna pat this out right onto your cookie sheet into like a thin, just a thin dough. See, so easy, you don't need to roll or do anything, you're just patting. Now it's probably not gonna fill your whole cookie sheet, just, I just kinda like a bigger one so I have room to work with, but just as far as it'll go. But using your wet hands just makes all the difference in the world because it just really helps you stretch out that dough for exactly the way you want and don't you worry, it will not alter the recipe one bit. Okay, so my dough's all rolled out and this is kinda what I got. And now we do the next part. Okay, so there are a few steps, but as you can see, it's really easy. So remember our leftover egg? We've got our egg, we've got a little brush, and we're just gonna go ahead and paint that egg right on, and that's just kind of give it a glossy sheen and set, and it's also gonna act as the perfect glue to hold our peanuts. And this is just such a great little idea. I mean, no wonder she won, this is just, a very, very different, different concept for a cookie. Okay, we have our eggs, and now on to our peanuts. Just sprinkle them all over, because it's peanut brittle after all. And I'm sure you're still making the peanut brittle that I showed you how to make a couple weeks ago. There it is. <laughs> well now here's a new riff on it. So we've got our peanuts. Now it's gonna go into our 325 oven for between 20 to 25 minutes. You don't wanna over bake it, so you wanna watch it and just see if it's like golden on top. And we will be right back. Hey, we're back. So it's been 20 minutes and our cookies are ready. Yay, 1953. Ah, oh, what a great year. Take a look. This is what you want. You, you definitely want a little browning around the edges, but it is golden, it is perfect. You don't see any more wet dough and this literally took 20 minutes. So I, I pulled it out at 20 because it looked just like this and that's just where you want it. And what you wanna do is you just wanna, you wanna cut them warm. So I let this sit out on a cookie sheet in the tray for about 10, 12 minutes. So it's just, you know, not super hot to the touch and now they're ready to cut. So all we're gonna do, you can actually do it one of two ways. You can break them just like you would break peanut brittle, just like that which I kind of like because it looks like a very rustic thing. But you can also use a trusty knife and cut them in squares. You can really do whatever you want, but it's like you've got this peanut brittle thing going on. You kind of want to make it look like peanut brittle. So I'm just going to break off a few pieces just like that. And of course the inside is a little more tender, but it still gives you that break. And I'm going to move that out of the way and put in my fabulous looking platter, which I love very, very much. There we go. And they are ready to serve. So if these cookies won Mrs. Hamlin $10,000, $1,000 in 1953 money, then they will certainly make your family happy now. And as you can see, they're easy, very, very few ingredients, and they're just, they're just fabulous. So there you go. Peanut brittle cookies winner of, not the winner, but one of the winners of the 1953 Pillsbury Bake Off. 
from Mrs. John Hamlin. Thank you, Mrs. Hamlin. They're fabulous. Give them a try. If you would like to explore more dishes from your childhood or just the past, I invite you to subscribe. I release new videos every Friday. In the meantime, here's some more retro dishes for you. And remember, every dish, even peanut brittle cookies from the Pillsbury Bake Off, has a story. I'll see you in the next video.